Nearly 70 years after his death, Hank Williams remains one of the most recognizable faces and voices of popular American music of the 20th century. As our cultural icons pass from life to legend and into myth, the facts surrounding their lives do the same. And due to his unexpected death at such an early age, Hank Williams became one of the first American superstars to make that journey. One of the most widespread myths about Hank Williams going today is that his middle name was King. It's a myth that has really taken off over the past 15 or 20 years with the advent of the internet. As with most things online, someone saw it, assumed it was true, and ran with it, and now it is given as fact in museums, halls of fame, encyclopedias, etc., and accepted as fact with zero evidence that it is true. In this video, I have compiled all the evidence that proves it is not true. So let's take a look at what we know are the facts. Being a country music superstar, Hank Williams signed quite a few legal documents in his lifetime. Multiple record contracts, publishing contracts, performing contracts, marriage license, car titles, property deeds, on and on. Not once did he ever use the name King while filing or signing any of these documents. A perfect attendance certificate Hank received for the month of February in 1932 gives his name as Hiram Williams and makes no mention of the name King. The name is not listed on his birth certificate, nor is it given on his death certificate. The only document where Hank provided a middle name that I'm aware of was his 1942 draft registration card for the United States Army on which he printed and signed his full name as being Hiram Hank Williams. So how and where did all this misinformation come from? As far as anyone can tell, it all stems from a misunderstanding that former Drifting Cowboys fiddle player Jerry Rivers had after a conversation with Hank's mother, Lily. She explained to him and other members of Hank's band that she and Hank's father, Lon, named their son Hiram after King Hiram of Tyre from the Bible. She explained that he was a prominent figure in Freemasonry of which Lon was a lifelong practicing member and she herself was a member of the Eastern Star, a Masonic appendant body open to women. In his 1967 book, From Life to Legend, Jerry Rivers wrote the following, describing how he felt after playing the Grand Ole Opry for the first time with Hank in the late summer of 1949. As we rolled out of Nashville in Hank's Packard that night, I sat quietly in the back seat knowing I had changed. In those few moments on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry watching Hank perform and watching the audience respond, I regained a humility I lost somewhere along the line. I believe all musicians and entertainers go through a stage, although they may be very much amateurs at the time, when they feel like they are the best and could improve very little. I knew then and there there are some things that some of us have and some of us don't have. At that time, I knew Hank Williams was earning the title of his true christened name, King Hiram Williams. This is the earliest known documented account of the name King being associated with Hank Williams, and here it was given as his first, not middle name. Fellow Hank Williams historian and researcher Paul Nail asked Jerry Rivers about this in an interview conducted in August of 1995. After pointing out that the name King never appeared on any documents, legal or otherwise, from Hank's lifetime, Nail stated that Jerry was very open and apologetic, acknowledging that he had overstated the issue when he wrote that Hank's true Christian name was King Hiram Williams, confusing the title of the man for whom he was told Hank was named after with Hank's actual given name. While Jerry obviously accepted some of the responsibility for the confusion surrounding Hank's name, if we are to believe what Lily told him and the rest of the band, she too was unclear on the exact origins of the name Hiram. Thankfully, we can find the truth in a letter written by Hank's father to the editor of the Wilcox Progressive newspaper that was printed in their February 19, 1953 edition. He wrote, I am the real father of Hiram Williams, who was known for radio purposes as Hank Williams. When he was born on September 17, 1923, in Butler County, Alabama, in what is known as the Mount Olive West neighborhood, I chose his name from the scripture, 1 Kings 7th chapter 13th verse. While it is widely accepted, even by Hank's mother, that he was named after King Hiram of Tyre, 
One only has to look up and read the scripture given by Hank's father in this letter for themselves to understand that this isn't the case. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. If you know anything about how highly regarded a king is, it should go without saying that one king would not fetch another king to be brought to his kingdom to build a temple. The Hiram this section of scripture refers to as Hiram out of Tyre is not King Hiram, but a man named Hiram of Biff, who was the chief architect of Solomon's temple. As the temple was nearing completion, three fellow craft masons attacked him, demanding the secrets of a master mason. Hiram was challenged by each in turn, and at each refusal to divulge the information, each assailant struck him with his own tools and ultimately killed him. His murder is part of an allegory presented to all candidates during the third degree in Freemasonry. It is this Hiram that is a prominent figure in Freemasonry, not King Hiram of Tyre. I personally spoke to Lon's daughter and Hank's half-sister, Leela Griffin, about all of this last year. She stated that her father always claimed that Hank was named after Hiram Abiff and that had he been given a middle name, it would have been Abiff. Earlier this year, I discovered an article printed in the December 24, 1967 issue of the Montgomery Advertiser newspaper where Lon Williams is quoted as giving Hank's name as Hiram A. Williams. This further corroborates Leela's statements and entirely debunks the Hiram King Williams name directly from his father. So the bottom line is, Hank's official legal name was, is, and always has been Hiram Williams, just as it was written and misspelled on his birth certificate. Had it been Hiram King Williams or any variation of that, Hank surely would have used the name at some point in his life. While his mother only lived for two years after he passed away, There are no accounts of her calling him or writing about him using any name other than Hiram or Hank. Lon Williams lived until 1970 and in multiple interviews with biographers and newspapers never once mentioned the name King in association with his son. In fact, he provided most of the evidence to the contrary. There is simply no evidence or reason to believe King was ever a part of Hank Williams' name. Over the course of almost 70 years now, there have been multiple biographies written about Hank's life and career. Here are some of the most commonly cited and available biographies that do not give King as having anything to do with part of Hank's name. Sing a Sad Song, The Life of Hank Williams by Roger M. Williams, published in 1970. Hank Williams, Country Music's Tragic King by Jay Caress, published in 1979. Your Cheatin' Heart by Chet Flippo, published in 1981. Hank Williams, So Lonesome by Bill Kuhn, published in 1983. The Life and Times of Hank Williams by Arnold Rogers and Bruce Goodall, published in 1993. Hank Williams, The Biography by Colin Escott and George Merritt, published in 1994. And Lovesick Blues, The Life of Hank Williams, by Paul Hemphill, published in 2005. I'm making this video to provide evidence and proof to any fan or institution out there that would like to be historically accurate when providing information concerning Hank Williams. It's not right to attach a name to him that he never used and was never given to him. While it is easy to understand how all of this confusion began and has been repeated for many years now, let us set the record straight and honor Hank Williams' memory and legacy by using his real name and not one he never used and never even knew about.